Good morning, everyone. It's a great honor and privilege uh, to be here with you. The fact of the matter is that we must take these moments where we see people who are uh, willing to dedicate their lives for sacrifice and service. We have a responsibility to give them our great thanks and appreciation, and in particularly the families uh, who have been with them every step of the way on this journey. It's an honor to be here. Um, it's a great day uh, for the city of Chicago. I do want to thank all the families and friends and loved ones who are here today to celebrate our graduates and officers on this next leg of their life's journey. This moment would not be possible without your love and support. I also want to thank the police leadership um, and CPD command staff, and particularly Superintendent Brown and the chiefs uh, who are here with us today, for your skillful, compassionate leadership over the country's second largest police force, and I will say, the best damn police department in the country. <clears throat> of course, I also want to thank and congratulate all of our graduates. The 48 uh, new police officers, 44 new lieutenants, and 68 new sergeants, and two newly minted commanders, all of whom are answering the call to service. I, I want to say in particular to the new officers, the fact that you answered the call to serve in one of the most challenging times in the history of policing really speaks volumes about your character and your commitment. Cities across the country, including ours, are confronting the twin challenges of community safety and police reform. This moment requires us to embrace change, and change, I know, sometimes isn't easy. I ask you to lead with that good character and commitment and your heart as you go out and serve our residents. Importantly, lean into your training. Follow the direction of your supervisors. I also ask you to learn about the assets and gems in the neighborhood that you are about to serve and re realize the vibrancy and the history of each of these communities. The neighborhoods in which you will serve are so much more than just crime statistics. They are deep in history and culture. Get to know the people, and importantly, let them see you for who you are, the sons and daughters of Chicago. Our residents want you um, to be successful and respect and support you just as much as they support um, people in the community. We need you to form trust-based relationships with the residents that you serve, and I promise you it will make all the difference in your work and in our city. You're going to be on the front lines responding to our residents, sometimes on their worst days, <clears throat> in their most frightening moments. You may even find yourself in dangerous situations that only you, empowered by your training, your grit, and your determination, can remedy. Our residents in our city need your skillful, rapid, and nurturing response. Importantly, you must know, and hopefully you will see that from day one on the job, that this is a city that wants and supports constitutional policing. When residents know and see that you have their back, they will have yours. This is what I, not what I think, it's what I know. Because your success means their success, and importantly, the safety of every neighborhood in the city. So farm those trust-based relationships with the residents that you encounter. Get out of your cars, walk in the neighborhoods, and let them see you for who you are. People who are committed, who are taking the step to do uh, elevate service over self. It's a big responsibility, but we all, and why I say we, myself and the entire police leadership, are more confident that you have what it takes. You wouldn't be here celebrating this milestone if you weren't ready. Not only have you spent hours upon hours preparing for this moment, but you have that fighting resiliency and that spirit within you because you're Chicagoans. That spirit must be at the core of our city's strength, and that will shed light on your darkest days. And when all else seems to fail, 
Remember, folks, ladies and gentlemen, you are not alone. You're joining a new family with thousands of officers in your ranks who can support you and lift you up. Additionally, your leaders and mentors are there to support you and make sure that you're taken care of. <clears throat> Superintendent Brown is leading the charge uh, for change by making officer wellness a key pillar of the department's strategic plan. Notably, last year, he proposed a historic increase in funding for officer wellness, an additional $20 million, which I was happy to support and we passed in the budget that starts this year. Please take advantage of the additional resources. There will be situations that you cannot walk away from. You are the people who run to danger when others run away from it. But you can make the decision not to let your ex experiences and the trauma that you experience hinder your life and your happiness. Please use all of the tools and resources offered at our department to take care of yourselves. I want to just say to you loud and clear, there is no shame in recognizing you need additional supports and seeking the help that is available for you. The trauma that you will see is real, and that experience is real. Start right now, at the beginning of your career, to make a plan uh, for how you're going to invest in your health and well-being. That's critically important. Let me also say a few words to the supervisors um, that we are recognizing in their promotions today. First of all, congratulations. Congratulations. <clears throat> Congratulations and thank you for seeking a leadership position in the best police department in the country. I also want you to think about the newly minted officers and the thousands of young officers across this department. Please take care of them. They need you. Stand tall for them and model the behavior you want them to demonstrate each and every day out on the street. Your responsibility now is leadership goes way beyond the stats and deployments. These young officers, and frankly their families and friends, are trusting you with their lives and their livelihoods. Their well-being is crucial to the success of this department and the mission that they will be on every single day to keep our residents safe. Their well-being is a crucial part of that. Their growth is essential, and a lot of that depends upon you. So we need you to make sure that in your daily discharge of your responsibilities, you're thinking about the care of these young officers. Now, I want to say one last thing. It's officially summertime in Chicago. This is the season that we wait for all winter. And it's the best time in the year to enjoy everything that our city has to offer. But unfortunately, it's historically a time of challenge, particularly in neighborhoods that have seen way too much violence for way too long. I want to also say that you're not alone in the fight against violence. In this city, we do not work in silos. You heard the superintendent talk about the decrease in, in homicides, the decrease in shootings. Now, it's way too early for anybody to be taking a victory lap, but we have gotten to this point because we work in conjunction with every city department who views their work through a lens of public safety, and we've gotten this far and made this progress because we work in concert with our residents. We are working in the 15 most dangerous neighborhoods in our city that historically have driven 50% of our violence. And the numbers that you heard overall for the city they're significantly better overall in those neighborhoods. Shootings and homicides down 20 plus percent. That is a great accomplishment because we have come to the table in those communities with a humble heart and a listening ear and asked the critical question, what does it take in your community to make you and your residents, your neighbors feel safe? It's a different answer in Roseland than it is in East and West Garfield Park. It's a different answer in Inglewood than it is in Austin or in the far north side. But it's a question we must ask 
with our residents and work in conjunction with them. That's critically important. The fact that we solved, the de detected division solved more homicides last year than the last 19 years alone. Yes, it's, of course, it's diligence, it's hard work, it's use of the technology, but it's also that people have trusted the police as never before. Because every single one of those homicides that gets solved invariably starts with a tip from a resident. A resident that may be fearful, but put their faith above their fear and stepped out on that faith and said, I'm going to do the right thing and provide the information to a police department that I trust that will protect me. We can't make progress on public safety without making sure that our residents view each and every one of our police officers as legitimately doing the work that protects them and keeps them safe. So in this next few months in particular, we've got to lean into those relationships in every community. You'll hear me say every time about our public safety strategy that the solution doesn't lie with law enforcement alone. For way too long, we asked the police and the police alone to solve all of society's ills. And I believe that we've set the police up for failure. Public safety has to be a team sport. It's got to be each and every one of us asking ourselves every day, what more can we do? How can I step up and do my part? That's how we make the police the successful and not the fall guy. We cannot continue to ask the police alone to solve all of society's ills. It's not right that they should shoulder that burden alone. And importantly, it's simply not good strategy. And we've got decades of data that demonstrates that. You will find, ladies and gentlemen, in this city, lots of allies in a public safety fight. The people in the neighborhoods, your fellow department members, the fifth floor, and this mayor. We support you. And we know that we've got to all do our part as well in order for you to be successful in your daily missions. And though you are the pinnacle of law and, law and order, our entire city is working alongside you, addressing the root causes of violence to make our city safer, better, and fairer. And I want to thank you once again for stepping up in this moment. It's a very difficult time to be the police. And the fact that you are willing to step up, as I said before, is a great testament to who you are, the values that you have, the support system uh, that has helped you along this journey. And I want you to know we do and will and will always have your back. We need you to be successful because your success means that our city is, safe, is safer. So God bless you as you go out on these missions. God bless you as you step up and proudly wear the badge of the Chicago Police Department, which is a calling and an honor and a privilege. God bless you and God bless the great city of Chicago. Thank you.